Hello guys and welcome to this brand new video about Tailwind CSS. Actually, I think I'm going to do a big series on how to learn Tailwind CSS. I want to introduce you to Tailwind because it's one of the most famous CSS libraries now on the market. And in comparison to a lot of uh, components library, it's a very useful one because you really own your design system. To follow this course, I created a Next.js 13 application, but you can also follow this course with Vue.js, Svelte.js, and any other front-end framework that you want, that you like, and use also Tailwind. It's not a problem. You can install Tailwind Everywhere you want to do front-end or either you want to do an HTML, a single HTML file, it's also working. When we go on tailwindcss.com, we quickly understand that Tailwind CSS is providing to us already CSS written. So basically here we got classes that we apply to an HTML um, uh, file or UI element, whatever. And we see that the design is dynamically updated. So basically, the Tailwind CSS core team already write all the CSS we need and that we use most of the time to create elements. So we don't waste time on writing CSS. It's already here. So why not use it? So there are several ways to install Tailwind. So you can use the CLI provided by uh, Tailwind itself. It's the tool that helps you to install everything. But me, I'm going to use one of the framework guides here with Next.js. As you see here, there is Svelkit, Angular, Phoenix, SolidJS, Gatsby, whatever. It will work for you. Then we got also the CDN if you want to use it, for instance, in a single HTML file or for an email template or a plugin, whatever. You can use also Tailwind by importing the script. So I'm going to go on the framework guide, click on Next.js, even though I know that it's not really complete now because I'm using Next.js 13 and I will have to loop through my app folder. So I'm going to be here and what I'm going to use is directly the installation here that we got npm install minus the Tailwind CSS. I'm going to stop all of this. Post CSS auto prefixer. It's really important. Then I'm going to get back here and I need to init my Tailwind CSS files because Tailwind CSS comes with configuration file. The force of Tailwind is that you can customize everything before pre-processing your CSS final style sheet. What does it mean? It means that here in my tailwind.config.js, I can do a lot of configuration on colors, spacing, uh, typography, font family, whatever, that will help me to on the fly rebuild my CSS library and get my own customization available inside Tailwind. So I'm going to get back there. And in order to do so, I need to specify to Tailwind where to look at and where to get the files and to update them and pause them and see where are the classes that they can, he can use. Actually, I'm going to get back on tailwind.config.js and we see here that my content array is empty. I need to put here pages and components. Because if you are using Next.js 12 or the version before the, the, the last version, which is the Next.js 13, you have the pages folder that contains tons of files with extension, JS, TypeScript, JS6, TS6, and components also that contains also uh, files with extension. And basically there, Tailwind has to know that he has to look at this. However, here in Next.js 13, we have an app folder we want to look at. So I need to add this app there. Here in the documentation, it says Next.js 13 v10 plus project. But the documentation at the time I'm doing this video is not updated. So we need to say, look at the app folder, which is here. What I need to do is to go on my global.css file and add Tailwind with the at decorator Tailwind, I will call Tailwind and say, please bring me something. And here it's base. Then we import components and utilities. We need all those elements to make Tailwind works inside our app. So in global.css, 
I remove the previous code that I have when I generate my Next.js 13 app and I had my Tailwind there. Now down there, I got an example. I'm going to copy paste this piece of GSX there. And instead of A, I'm going to just copy paste this hello world. Now I'm going to type yarn dev. I'm going to make my application running. I'm going to get back. And then when I update, I'm supposed to have Tailwind CSS loaded. It is working. And if I want to check if Tailwind has been imported, I go to my source um, tab in my console. On localhost here, I can go to next static, which is here, which is the build of my app. I go to CSS. And when I click on app.global.css, we see that I got Tailwind CSS running. Amazing. We are ready to follow this quick course. Okay, so how do we use Tailwind CSS? It's really easy. We use Tailwind CSS with CSS classes. I'm going to pass on all the core concept and customization part. Maybe we will do it later. In this first course, I want to talk about the main uh, stuff that you are going to use in your front-end developer life, which means the colors. Let's start by the colors. Tailwind CSS give us a big palette since the beginning. So we can start with these colors already provided by Tailwind. And which is cool here, it's that we've got, for instance, this slate color there, and we've got different gradients, okay? And it's the same for every color down there. So let's say that we would like to use, for instance, um, this green color there, okay? What I can do is back in my app, and I'm going to get back in the piece of code I just paste, okay? I got here the some classes, okay? Here, text uh, minus free XL. Actually, it's a class related to the size. Then we've got font bold. It's really easy to understand. It's a class related to the weight of the uh, actual um, string. Then we got underline. Let's remove all of this, okay? And let's start by an empty class for this uh, piece of string. So there, we get back to the app, and we've got hello world uh, just written in here. So I'm going, I think I'm going to zoom in. There we go, hello world. And let's say that we want to apply this green color. Well, normally, what we would do is we would create a CSS class called dot green, and we would put the uh, code color, the X color there inside our class. But what we can do with Tailwind, because it's already written for us, we can go here and type text. Text means that we call the variable text, which is inside Tailwind, and it is waiting for an action to be done. So we are going to put a minus or dash, and then here what we can do is put the color we want. So I'm going to type green, I'm using the IntelliSense extension of VS Code. So basically, it's really important, if you want to use uh, Tailwind CSS in VS Code, please use IntelliSense extension. So you type IntelliSense there, and I'm going to open this. Down there here, I got Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. Tailwind CSS IntelliSense extension help us to auto-complete, to lint, to correct our Tailwind CSS code written inside our VS code. So here I got nothing that is uh, showing because text green doesn't mean anything for Tailwind, which means that here I got to put another information to tell him which kind of color I want to use. Do I want to use the 50, the 100, the 200, the 300, the 400, the 500? Which one do I need to use? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to need to use the 600. So I'm going to get back on my app and put a text green minus 600. Sorry, it copied the code. And here, look, IntelliSense understood that I want to use the text green 600. And so it shows to me this little square there with the color. So I'm going to get back in there. And when I update, the color has been applied. And let's just, let's just inspect this element and look what is in our console. So I'm going to move because here you don't see it. 
I'm just in front of it. <laughs> Here we've got the color there with something really weird for real beginners. The RGB code with the variable TW text opacity. What is that? Text green 600 is a CSS class that comes from app.globals, app underscore globals CSS. And if I click on it, look at it, I'm back inside my Tailwind CSS main file. It's full of content. And at the end of this content, a new class has been created, text green 600, which is really cool because if you understand well, back in there, in the color palette, we've got several classes there that exist that are provided by green. But actually, we got only 600. So it means that Tailwind only create and picks the code it needs to run. It doesn't add every color if you don't use them. It's just adding the color you need. And we can make the test there by creating, for instance, let's create a div. Let's create another title, but with a different color. And here, for instance, I think we got yellow. And there we go. We see that we got yellow. And when I get back, I'm going to close this. I update and look at this down there. We've got text yellow 600 that has been added. And that's what is really cool with Tailwind. Tailwind is going to create the classes it only needs, which means at the end, you will not have a big CSS file that you don't use or you only use 10%. You will use 100% that is provided in here and all the main stuff that you really need. So this was for the text color. But let's say that we want to put a background, which is amazing with Tailwind. It's that it always works the same way. Instead of having text green 600, let's say that we want to have, for instance, BG green 600, which means BG for background. And then we are going to put a text white there because we want to have a text white. BG, this entry here is telling to my H1 to apply a background of what? Green 600. And I'm going to get back there. I'm going to update and look at that. There we go. We've got our background. How amazing is that? It's really easy to understand. And that's what I like about Tailwind CSS is that you can really uh, uh, switch from some classes that you will use for the colors, the text, the grid that we will see later really easily because once you understand this, Tailwind CSS is really easy to handle. Let's say now that instead of having this background green, we want to have a border and it really happens often. So I'm going to remove all of this. And if I type border and I get back and I update, there we go, we see that we got a border and this random border has been applied directly from Tailwind. So let's say that this border, we want it to be uh, thicker. What we can do is put a dash and we are not going to use 50 or 100 or whatever. We are just going to use the size of the pixel. So here, let's say that we want to have six pixels. If I type border six, when I update, it doesn't apply. Why? So let's go. Let's go to the documentation and let's type border and let's look at the border. And which is cool with the Tailwind documentation, it's that down there, we've got the classes that are provided directly by Tailwind. And we have some sizes already made there. So I can only use 0, 2, 4, 8, or just 1. And if I want to use other borders, if I don't want to have border that takes all, I can use minus R. We're going to see that just after. Minus L for left, minus bottom, B for bottom, etc., etc. So I'm going to get back there and put a minus four, get back. And when I update, there we go, I got my border there. But remember, we want our border to be green. So I'm going to get back there and type border green and look at that. IntelliSense is grabbing all the colors that we've got. So I'm going to type colors there. All the colors that we've got here directly inside my VS Code. So I'm going to type 600. I'm going to save. 
and I'm going to update and the border green has been applied. Okay, that's cool. But let's see now how can we deal with custom colors. So I'm going to go on uh, Google there and I'm going to type color picker and I'm going to take a random green, okay? Let's say that I want to have this particular green there and I got the code down there on the X. What can I do to say to Tailwind to use this color? What I can do is customizing my color. So I'm going to click here on using customize color and here we see that we have to go on tailwind.config.js file. So I'm going to get back there and I go to tailwind.config.js file. And this is where all the customization magic happens. So what I can do is enter my team. So I got a team that is open and I already got extended. Okay, extend, sorry. So extend here. Uh, will be used later to uh, improve the actual model. But if I want to put a new color there, what I can do is, let's say that here I got my Vue.js. Oh, I'm on next, but I'm going to use, let's say that I'm going to add a new color. So I'm going to type colors there. And I'm going to type my Vue.js green color, okay? And here, what I can do is, putting directly my color there. And I don't need to do that, actually. There we go. Now I got Vue.js as a color available. And when I get back to my app, this is what happens. I don't got the old colors anymore. Why? Because I overwrite the colors from the team there. So I overwrite my colors, and there are two solutions to that. I can either re-import the colors from the Tailwind the main Tailwind um, node modules that I already got. Otherwise, I need to put those colors into Extend because Extend is the option to say, okay, I keep the original Tailwind uh, library, but I want to add this, this, this on top of it. So I can take colors there, go to Extend and put my colors inside of it instead of having on the top of Team. And when I get back, I got my colors back. So what I can do here directly is to go inside my app folder there and go to my page. And instead of having this, this text yellow 600, I'm going to put text Vue.js. And here, look, IntelliSense understood that we want this green color. And when I update, I got my own color. So this is how it works to get the customization colors that we need. And of course, inside this Vue.js, we could do the same as Tailwind. We could say that 100 is this color, okay? But we could say, for instance, that uh, 932 is, the, uh, is another color. Let's say, uh, yes, uh, there we go. Let's say it's this one. And when I will use that there, I can do text Vue.js 100, with this color, and also I can use the other color with my own key that I created inside my extend there. All right, guys, this is the end of this video. If you like it, please put a thumbs up. It really helped me. And yeah, I'm going to do more video about Tailwind CSS in details like this to help you to understand and to handle this amazing CSS library. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye.